Hey everybody, I wanted to take a little bit of time and go over some of the post lab stuff. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the biggie, and the biggie in my book is the analysis. So um, let's spend a little bit of time talking about the analysis. Now, I will tell you that if I had my choice, I would make the analysis worth like 50% of your grade. Um, the analysis is very, very important to me um, to make sure that you understand what you did in lab and why it happened. And that's your way of explaining to me that you are um, kind of organic chemistry literate, so to speak. So the analysis should be very detailed and very complete. Okay, so let's take a look at what we can do here. Oh. I guess I should get rid of the data table stuff, right? <laughs> okay. So, an analysis. An analysis should have, let's uh, go here. So, we will talk about the analysis. Okay. The analysis should have a reference back to the purpose of the lab. Okay, if you're not referring back to the purpose of the lab, then you are probably not writing your analysis correctly. Okay, so let's take experiment nine. Okay, it doesn't matter, but it's fine. So the purpose of experiment nine was to synthesize. Okay, synthesize cyclohexanone um, synthesized pure let's do it like that okay so I would say in this I would say to start this off I would say in this lab cyclohexanone was synthesized was synthesized in um, moderate moderate purity or if you have it very pure you can say hey, it was synthesized in high purity or in technical grade purity okay but these two things if this is the if this is the um, the purpose or the whatever objective this should relate back to here okay now here's what here's where we go from here okay now we're going to spend a paragraph or more discussing how you know you made cyclohexanone. How? How do you know? So what instruments tell us about structure? Well, the IR. So you spend a lot of time talking about the IR peaks. Um, not only the peaks that are present, um, but the peaks that aren't present too can also be a, a telltale sign okay and then the index of refraction also gives us an idea of how um, how what our compound is and so you can then talk a bunch about this not only what the index of refraction is but you can talk about how far off it is you can talk about what if it's off what compounds are making it off is it um, is it starting material is it um, is it some other side product is it solvent so there's all sorts of things that can explain how do you know how do you know that it's cyclohexanone give me the proof that this is this okay and so that's going to be details okay give me details and then the next sec section or paragraph or set of paragraphs is how do you know purity how do you know purity so if you did a GC explain the peaks of the GC with this one relates to 
Um, this this one relates to the sorry, whichever peak relates to the um, to the product, tell us that. Whichever peak relates to the impurities, tell us that. Tell us how much impurity there is based on the GC. And then also index of refraction can tell us how impure something is. Okay, if it's um, if the index of refraction is way high, explain how it could be really high. You have a list of compounds that you did in your pre-lab that discussed, and, and you were that you discussed that you should have looked up their their indexes of refraction. Okay, if your compound has an index of refraction of 1.2, and you got a measured index of refraction of 1.1, so this is the actual and this is yours, okay, and then, and then you got ether, and ethers is 1.4, well, if yours is lower, what you know is that it's probably not going to be ether that's mixed in with this. Based on this list, you want the thing that is, um, that is, has an index of refraction lower than that, okay, because that's going to be what causes your index of refraction to go to get lower, okay. Now the last thing is you want to talk about percent yield, okay. Um, why was your yield low or high? You know, eighty. If you had an eighty percent yield, okay, but let's say your let's say your purity is way off. That means that this yield is actually much lower than 80% because your your purity is off enough that this, you know, and you don't have to calculate it out, but your yield may show that you that it's, um, you know, 63% or something. Okay, why is it, why is your yield low or what happened that caused your yield to be, um, to be not, uh, to be not high, or if it was high, then make sure that you report that your yield was really good, okay? And so what you end up having is a prescription for writing a really good analysis where you are taking each part of this and relating it back to what the goal of the lab was, okay? And so we want to, we want to, you want to Spend as much time as you can making sure that you explain this as well as you can. Okay, refer it back to the purpose, then talk about how do you know that you made the compound, how do you know how pure it is, and then talk about its yield. Okay, all of that goes into an analysis, and I really like making sure that you understand this stuff. Okay, one of the things that I want to make sure that I explain is that up here when you talk about purity or maybe up here when you talk about structure, you don't have to just talk about index of refraction or IR or things like that. You can also talk about sometimes mechanism plays a role. Mechanism. Okay, and while you can't be sure if you write it correctly, you can also talk about how the mechanism can affect um, the structure or the purity of the compound. Um, experiment 12, we do a Grignard reaction. Well, Grignard reactions, um, you know, Grignard reagents react with everything. So, you know, that's a mechanism thing, or that's a, that's a, that's a mechanism thing and a, um, and a reaction conditions thing. So, you know, knowing the chemistry behind this also um, may help you writing up this part of the lab, okay? The thing to avoid, and I hate that I'm nine and a half minutes in and now I'm talking about the things to avoid, but, okay, things to avoid, okay? Do not, okay, don't um, just rewrite, rewrite observations, okay. 
don't rewrite or um, and don't just give a list. Do not just list um, data. The whole point of an analysis is to put that data and those observations into usable chemistry context. So this is what I said at the very beginning. Okay, this is how I'm going to know whether you're just kind of flopping through the lab and is able to do it or whether you truly understand what the heck is going on. Okay. And so, um, so spend time, make sure that you can, um, relate the data back to the purpose, put it in context, relate it back to the chemistry, relate it back to mechanisms, relate it back to percent yield, relate it through the whole thing. Okay. Because that's, what's really going to get you a good score on your, um, analysis. So I hope that helps. Uh, have a great day.